Hi everybody, today I'm going to be talking about the amazing differential gearing mechanism. Um, this mechanism was originally invented in 1827 by a French engineer. I won't try to pronounce his name, but I'll put it on the screen now. And the problem he was trying to solve was that of a, at the time, of a steam vehicle uh, driving around the corner. And of course this problem exists today and, and we still use the exact same solution. So the problem is that if you've got a vehicle like this and it's got a, the wheels are connected by a fixed axle, then when it goes around the corner, you'll find that the wheel on the inside, um, because it's taking a smaller arc than the outside, ends up traveling a, a shorter distance. So for example, if we draw that on a piece of paper, we've got our inner arc going around the corner, which has got this kind of radius, and then we've got the outer arc, going around the corner and that has got a larger radius and of course this distance around the outside is a lot longer than around the inside so what that means for the vehicle is that invariably the um, the wheels will have to have some slippage or loss, loss of traction going around the corner the solution of course is the well-known differential gearing mechanism uh, you would have all come across this at some point uh, when building one of the larger Lego Technic vehicle sets, they pretty much all use some sort of differential carrying mechanism to drive the wheels. And of course this allows the vehicle to go around the corner uh, without any slippage because the wheels, the back wheels can turn independently from each other when being driven by the drive shaft. Now Lego provides two versions of the differential gearing mechanism. On the left here we've got the grey one and the, on the right here we've got the red one. So the main difference between them, uh, apart from the width, is the topology of the driving uh, gearing mechanism. So for this one here we've got the driving shaft uh, coming out uh, perpendicular to the wheel shaft. And on this one the driving shaft uh, is in parallel. Now the other big difference as well is the gearing mechanism uh, between those uh, or the gearing ratios so with this one here we've got a 28 tooth gear typically driving a 20 tooth bevel which means that the ratio between the barrel and the output axle is in fact 7 to 1 whereas uh, this differential mechanism has got two options on the left here it's got a 16 tooth gear and on the right there a 24 tooth gear and what that means is by driving the 16 tooth gear onto another 16 tooth gear that means that the output ratio between the barrel and the axle is one to one and that is very important uh, for the scenario where you want to use the differential to create other types of gearing ratios which is one of the things I'm interested in. Now we'll just look at the mathematics behind the differential gearing mechanism. If we think of these two axles here as being input axles to an output barrel or output axle over here, we can write the relationship between them um, as follows. So we can draw this gearing mechanism perhaps just as having an input, which is the left axle here, input A going into our differential, and then we've got input B creating an output C. Now it turns out that the relationship between A, B and C is simply that the output C is the average of the speeds of A and B. So we can write that C is equal to A plus B divided by 2, so that's just simply the average of A and B. And then by rearranging this equation we can write, by cross multiplying the 2, we can write 2C equals A plus B and then we can write that for example a is equal to 2c minus b. Now the great thing about this equation it allows us to create different gear ratios that we might otherwise be able to create just using the standard Lego Technic gears uh, using the 2, 3, 5 or 7 ratios. So for example if we use a c equal to 9 and a uh, b equal to 1 then we get a is equal to 2 times c which is 18 minus 1 which is 17. So that means that the gearing ratio between uh, for a if b turns around once then the ratio between b and a will be 17 to 1. So I'll just show an example of an actual construction of that mechanism. Right so I've created an implementation of the 17 to 1 gear ratio using the differential mechanism. Um, on the right here we've got this axle here represent, which represents axle B on the diagram. We've got the central barrel which represents axle C on the diagram there and A on the left. 
So according to the maths, so if we've got a b equal to 1, that means for every revolution of b going around once, we need a c of 9. That means that c needs to go around 9 times, c being the central barrel. So we've done that by driving it from a 3 to 1, another 3 to 1, which then connects to a 1 to 1 and a 1 to 1. So that gives an overall ratio of 9 to 1 between b and c. And then according to the equation, A should turn around 17 times. Now it's easier to illustrate that by turning this around. And turning the handle 17 times should give us a revolution, uh, one revolution on the left there. So we'll quickly do that. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17 which demonstrates that it does actually work 17 to 1, there we go now if you spend a bit of time playing around with the equation a equals 2c minus b you'll realize you can create many of the prime uh, gearing ratios that you might need uh, so for example I've created a list here of a number of ways of creating uh, various different primes so over here we've got uh, the equation a equals 2c times b at uh, 2 times c minus b in this column here we've got the C column, the B column and the output A column. So as you can see here we can create many many of the different primes or pretty much any, any prime number that we like uh, using different combinations of uh, C and B. So for example we can create a 7 to 1 by using C equals 3 and B minus 1. So minus just means the, uh, the gear is going in reverse. Um, so we can create 11 to 1 by using a 4 and a minus 3 or a 6 and a 1. There's actually many different ways of creating the same prime number. Um, I've created this list all the way to, to 53 but I'm sure there's many many more ways of uh, combining these figures to create pretty much any gear ratio that you might need. Of course not all of these would be um, that pragmatic in practice but given there's so many different options I'm sure you can find one that could suit your needs. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it and uh, got a bit of understanding of differential gearing mechanisms. Thanks very much and please like and subscribe for more great content. Catch you next time.